Michelle? Hiya. Sorry I had to blow you out the other night. Oh, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. We have more important things to worry about. How is Tracy? Not great. Been backwards and forwards to the hospital all weekend. Right. It's Amy I feel sorry for. It's upsetting for her to see her mum like that. I mean, I wouldn't take her, but Deirdre insists in case. In case what? She's not that ill, is she? No, just got to hope for the best. Oh, no. You, uh, you're not in work today? No, I am waiting for a delivery. New furniture for the flat. Right, I better go. I'm sorry again that I let you down. I will make it up to you. I'll hold you to that. Good. <laughs> oh, enjoy your romantic dinner with the lover boy, did you? We did. But you do get some rough types in there nowadays. Thing is, having dinner with Carl, it always gets a bit nerve-wracking when the bill arrives. Will he do a runner? Will they cut up his card? Oh, give it a rest, Stella. Oh, yeah. I've been thinking about what you said. You're right, I've got a fight. I'm glad to hear it. She can't just walk off with my baby like I'm nothing. I must have rights. Well, she'd have rights if you walked out on her. Give us a bonus list. It cost you 200 quid, and that's just to give him the door. Of course, money well spent to find out the facts, see where I stand legally. Have you actually reported a missing? No. Because, I mean, you're going to have to find her first before you can start demanding access rights to the kiddie when it's born. Could I get custody? Well, why not? It's your baby. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to call the police. Hey, and cheaper than a solicitor. Is he asleep? Yeah. Shouldn't you better get going? There's no rush. Well, in it old and market on a Monday. I might give it the body swerve. Hang out with you and Joe. Mm, can we afford for you to have the day off? One day won't do any harm. Oh, blimey. Business must be good. <laughs> yeah, we're ticking over. Right, well, I need to make a couple of calls about the christening. And then maybe we could go to the seaside or something. Well, we can't go in the van. Why not? I'd have to empty out all the stock. So it'll take us hours to get there. The traffic will be horrendous. We might as well just go to the swings, spend some quality time together. Oh. <laughs> even allowed to have a drink. Oh, no. They need to keep it sterile. It's a, it's a high dependency unit. I might go and stretch my legs in a minute, though. You go if you want to. I'm, I'm not leaving. Oh. Hi, love. Where's Amy? She's staying at Abby's house. It's all right. Steve's going to bring her in later. Is he? Yeah. Do you know, I feel so much better when Steve's here. There are all two of us constantly by your bed. Mm. Me and Steve have got our whole lives ahead of us, man. Hello again. Hello, Doctor. I have some good news. Really? Yeah, the vital signs seem to be stabilising, which suggests that the infection isn't getting any worse. The antibiotics appear to be working. We're getting some kidney function back. So she, she's out of danger, then? Not quite. But we've every reason to be more optimistic now. <laughs> Did you hear that, love? You're going to be all right. I told you she was a little fighter. Mary? It's me. Hello? You off somewhere nice? I oh, just to the park. Bummer about his van, eh? What about the van? Nothing. The van's fine. Have I just dropped you in it? Yes. Ah. Will you stop knocking? I heard movement, so I knew you were in. <laughs> Sometimes people don't answer the door because they don't want to see anyone. <laughs> Come on, I thought we were going to the park. No, I've gone off the idea. Katie. You were so convincing. Oh, I might give you the body swerve. I'm going to have you and the baby today. Look, get off! I just didn't want to worry you. Oh, do you not worry me? Big fat lies worry me, Chess. Oh, I was really trying to find the right time to tell you. Oh, so you've known all weekend. Longer. What are you going to do if the van's kaput, Chess? You need transport. Your business relies on it. Move. 
What are you doing here? Need a cab? Liar. I'm serious. Got a couple of packages to drop. One in you, one in Ancoats. Murder on the bus. There's no way you're using our cabs to deliver drugs. You can't just turn up here. I was hoping you'd give me a discount. Come on, the driver won't know. Get out. It's exceptionally good gear. I could let you have a bit. Call it commission. No, thanks. You hesitated. Are you mad? What? Can't leave your house. When you got a delivery coming, you'll end up with one of them things on your mat. Can I stop you right there? They've already been. <gasps> Not delivered it on time. Yep. I am now the proud owner of a brand new sofa. Mm. Not quite sure it's in the right place yet, though. In fact, I'm looking for a nice, strong man to help me move it. None about, though, so what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm skint. You can pay me when you've got the dosh. If anyone even sees me talking to you, you can't talk to a mate. No one who deals drugs, no. <laughs> They'll go. Did you just say drugs? He's just leaving. Are you selling my son drugs in broad daylight? Get out now before I call the police. I'll be back. No, you flipping won't. Get out and stay away from my business. <laughs> After everything I've done for you and you promised me you'd quit. Well, you got it wrong. I didn't buy anything. Well, you would have if me and Steve hadn't walked in. No, I was telling him to leave. I, I didn't know he was going to turn up. I like you. She'll never believe another word I say. Well, what a very clever move inviting your deal around. And I meant what I said. This is my place of business. I'd already sent him packing. Who was he anyway? He's just an idiot I met in a club. Well, what was he doing here? It's a bit risky, isn't it? Because you know he was a worker and he thought I wanted to score. All oh, right, so you didn't call him up then? No, he's just someone I met. You know he was a dealer? No. So he wasn't here thinking he could make some easy cash? Steve. I'm just checking. You know you can be straight with me. I am being. I might as well save my breath, though, seeing as neither of you believe a word I say. It's not just the drugs you've got to worry about, it's the people that come with them. I don't do drugs. Good! You know, your mum only went off on one because she's worried about you. I don't know. Well, I'll talk to her if you like, see if I can smooth things over. Will you? Are you swear to me you're not doing drugs? I swear. I thought you were job hunting. I am. It's the job page I'm looking at. Stella had a dig earlier. Said you were a freeloader. Well, she's right, I am. To be fair, we did lose to the better dancers, but I don't know, with a bit of practice. Roy, are you listening to me? Sorry. I'm sorry, I was thinking about Mary. It was like talking to a different person. A rather rude person. Well, she has a fiery temper. I can't believe the views she expressed are those she holds. Well, maybe she has just gone off chess. She's borderline fanatic. It was her who prevaricated over her next move for hours on end. Really? Yeah, one match finished near midnight. I suggested a time limit. Did it now? It's an absorbing marathon, I have to admit. And now suddenly she's anti-chess? Anti-me. I think perhaps I must have said something unintentionally on the Malvern trip. But she seemed fine yesterday. So when exactly did she start behaving oddly? Well, she was very quiet on the journey home, but I put that down to embarrassment over the hotel mixer, which I fully intend to take up with them later today. Uh, talk me through exactly what happened again, in, in minute detail. Well, she rang to confirm the booking. The hotel says there's no rooms available. You didn't tell me that bit. Did I not? Well, no matter. The crisis was averted. Mary pointed out there is spacious accommodation available in the car park. <laughs> How lucky was that? Well, it saved us scouring the area for a suitable B and B. So you made yourselves cosy in the motorhome. Mary had the beds made up ready, but but then she agreed we should come home. Just like that. Oh, she was aware that I wanted to see you after a competition. Said if she put her foot down, we could make it. And that's all that happened. Yes. Are you sure? Uh, yes. 
Can you stay, excuse me for a minute? Uh, yeah, yes. Where, where are you going? I just need to nip out. Thought it might have been Ryan, armed with more lies. No, I don't think he's lying. Oh, come off it, Steve. We caught him red-handed. Yeah, but this Nile guy just turned up out of the blue. That's what Ryan says, and I believe him. But how's he even know him? Met in a club, apparently. No, he's just chanting his arm. Pushing. Listen, when I caught him doing coke in the Rovers, he swore to me that it was a one-off, that it was some stuff he'd got from uni. Now he's hanging round with people like that. This problem's worse than I thought. Nah. Steve, he knows a dealer. Yeah, we didn't hear everything they said. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Ryan was saying no. Oh. These dealers prey on lads like Ryan. He's not stupid, though. He's got his head screwed on. He knows he's been an idiot and he's, he's, he's trying to straighten himself out. I hope you're right. I'm trying to stay calm. I'm just so worried about him. Listen, come on. If you are right and he is on a slippery slope, then we have to help him. We? Yeah, me for both of you. But what about Tracy? I don't have to be at the hospital yet. Anyway, this is important. I can't leave you like this. Come on out, Mary. I know you're in there. <sighs> What's going on? What do you mean? What are you hiding from? Why are you being rude to your friend? Pretending you don't like chess. It has lost its allure. <laughs> Have you got designs on my husband? Don't be ridiculous. You lied about the hotel, didn't you? No. The reason there weren't any rooms is because you didn't reserve any. I did. I did with garden views, £86 per night, including breakfast. It was a ruse so you could lure my husband back to the motor home. No. I think you've had your eye on him for quite some time. You're wrong. And even if you're right, I'd be wasting my time. He's only got eyes for you. He's made that abundantly clear. So you propositioned him? OK, OK. If it's a confession you want, I will give you one. Only not in public. Save me the humiliation. Can't help thinking maybe I didn't give him enough guidance. Maybe I was too laid back. Well, it's not your fault. I know, no, but... Don't blame yourself. You were a great mum. I saw it first hand. You were devoted. Otherwise, where would he come back here? Because he got kicked out of uni. Because he got out of his depth and there was only one person he could turn to. Look, Ryan's not a junkie. He's just one of thousands of kids who are experimenting. And it's not like it's some, you know, massive secret. It's out in the open and you two are dealing with it. Nice sofa. Hmm. Not sure I like it now. Loved it in the shop. It's very nice, very comfy. Heather? Yeah. Nice. Might look better over there, though. Is that why you want it shifting? Do you mind? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's tea in the pot if you want some. I'm not here to socialise. Oh, stop fretting. I'm a walking disaster when it comes to the opposite sex. Men I like don't like me. Men I don't like don't like me. I should know better than to make a fool of myself. I know, but... Show me forbidden fruit and I'm like evil and eat as much as you like buffet. I just want the truth, Mary. <sighs> yes. Roy and I made a connection. <sighs> Initially through chess, but then through music and culture and conversation. He has such interesting views on so many different topics. So you develop some sort of infatuation, is that what you're saying? You make it sound so trivial. I'm feeling threatened, angry. But you're married to the most loyal man. A man, all the same, capable of being flattered. Incapable of straying from the course he set himself. That's what's so attractive. He's so honest and decent. Attraction? You're using that word now. I admit to having the odd, inappropriate feeling, but all too quickly vanquished by Roy's steadfast dedication to his one true love. Did you try it on? Did you make a parcel? I know when I'm whistling in the wind. I just wanted to spend some time with him. I was the one that drove us back. If I had designs on him, why do that? Because
because you humiliated yourself. He was fretting so much about not having spoken to you. Was he? I may as well have been invisible. In fact, I very quickly found myself wishing that I was. Uh, a couple more inches that way. <laughs> All right, that'll do. <laughs> <sighs> well, listen. I hope that me and Amy are as close as you and Ryan when she's 20. You will be. She worships you. No, I don't know about that. So I'm sorry, Steve. You know, for dumping all this on you. Uh, look, you're a wonderful woman, a wonderful mum. I was an <laughs> idiot to ever mess you around. Steve. Well, it's true. You know, we were brilliant together and then I flipping blew it. Better than that. <laughs> You've been hoping for it, though. <laughs> You've been hoping for weeks. Yeah, but I uh, thought we might have to play the longer game. It's the point. It was what we both want. Is it what you want? Yeah. Is it what you want? Yeah. You don't look very sure. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> well, <clears throat> it wasn't just the sofa that I had delivered. Got a new bed and all. Really? Hmm? What's it? Well, it's the middle of the afternoon. I know. Let's go. <laughs> there you go. How much do I owe you? Now. You sure? Yeah, it was just a bulb, so I'll get us a pint next time you see us in the Rovers. All right, I'll hold you to that. Eileen's always telling me I need to know the uh, neighbours back, so cheers, man. Sorry, I think that's for me. How are you feeling, love? <sighs> I could have been run over by a bus. We have all been so worried about you. I knew that dodgy kidney your ex gave me would pack up one day. You've done pretty well, actually. You've been really poorly, but you're on the mend now. Thanks, ma'am. Thanks, Dad. Can't wait to see Steve. Yeah, well, he's coming in with Amy in a bit. I just wish I could have a shower. Well, at least I could brush my hair, you know, put on a bit of lippy. Well, you're hardly in any fit state to have a night out. Um, I just want to look my best for him. Look, Steve doesn't care what you look like. He's just glad you're alive. We all are. I've been thinking about what he said. Do you know, he definitely wants to try and make a go of it this time. Did he say that exactly? He said he'll always love me. Mm. Mm. OK. Yeah, I'm good. Are you? Yeah, good, good. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a rush. It's all right. I promised Deirdre I'd uh, take Amy to see her mum. I'm late as it is. It's all right. Well, maybe we can go for that drink later. Yeah, great. When? Just call me on your way back. OK. <laughs> uh, first of all, we go to bed. Then we go to the pub. It's like a date in reverse. <laughs> well, play your cards right. Might end up in bed again later. See you later. <laughs> See ya. Who's <laughs> hey, gone after? Yeah. Have you been gone ages? Don't really feel like working. What? So you calling it a day? Yeah. So what did they say? Not much. Waste of time. Really? Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, you're not just going to sit in the house on your own being miserable, eh? I'm fine. Look, why don't I call it a day? Let's go for a pint. Right, I'll get changed. I'll meet you there, then. You've got visitors. Oh, look, she's sat up. Amy, Steve, I'm so pleased to see you. Go on, uh, give your mummy a cuddle. But be gentle, love, cos your mummy's still very weak. Hey, I'm strong enough to give my little girl a big cuddle. You're next. Found it really awkward, actually. Why? Well, because she's not missing. She left me, there's a big difference. Yeah, but there's still a baby to think about. She have no legal rights over that old chestnut. 
tied up. And then when I told him she, she hadn't disappeared, that she'd walked out. I felt like an idiot, like I was wasting the time. Well, hey, she's still missing. Yeah, but she could walk back through that door tomorrow. And then, the female officer, she says, I know it's upsetting when you split up with someone, but it's not necessarily a policeman. Yeah, but she's carrying your baby, due in a few weeks. Do you not have any rights as a dad? They reckon she could set up a new life somewhere. Might never see her again. Her or the baby. Steady on, you don't want to exert yourself. Hey, I can beat this, Steve. Do you know what? I feel like I can do anything. And it's all down to you. Well, I'm sure the antibiotics must have helped. I could feel myself slipping away. But after what you said... Well, the main thing is, is that you're out of danger now, so... Yeah, I can start planning a future together. One day at a time, eh? You've been through a terrible ordeal. Steve, you have given me a reason to live. Well, good. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad. Hey, you did mean what you said, didn't you? When you said you'd always love me. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course I did. Good. Because this time, we are going to make it work. We're going to be a proper family. And we'll be back in Coronation Street in half an hour. <laughs>